Hey there, it's Ed. Today we're going to test the relay control board on the Samsung Electric Range. There might be an issue with the board after a power surge, wear and tear over time, or just simply a malfunction. Let's find out what the problem is and how you can fix it. Before we get started, hit those like and subscribe buttons if you want to join our repair community and get notified each time we post a new video guide. With over 2 million products in stock and the know-how to help you do it yourself, we are AppliancePartsPros.com. Let's get our tools together. Today we'll need a Phillips head screwdriver and a multimeter. And please remember that safety comes first. Always disconnect your range from power by unplugging it or switching the breaker off before you start working on it. Since the relay control board controls the lock, oven lamp, convection fan, heater, warming drawer, and bacon broil modes, it can cause several different problems if it's faulty. It may prevent the baker broil mode from working, and the convection motor might not work, among other things. To access the board, you'll need to pull out the range and remove the screws so you can take off the rear panel. Once the rear panel is removed, you'll see the relay control board about halfway down on the right side, just above the terminal block. For this test, the range needs to be plugged in and powered on. Please be very careful to protect yourself from electrical shock, which has the potential to cause serious injuries. Don't ever test live voltage if you're uncomfortable using a multimeter. We want to set the control panel to bake, then go to our first connector. The first connector that we'll test is the CNO4 connector. This connector is one of the two that goes between the main control board to the relay control board. It's on the far left top of the control board. There will also be three set of blue wires and orange wires. Set your multimeter to measure volts DC and use the probes to test here. You should get 4.7 volts DC on the meter when you go from each of the orange wires to the blue ones. If you have good voltage, then this means the main control board is sending voltage to the relay board. Next up is the CNO5 connector. It's the second connector to the right, next to the CNO4 connector. Your meter should still be set to volts DC. You should get 3.85 volts DC on the multimeter when you use the probes to test between each black and white wire. If you have good voltage, this means that the main control board is sending signal voltage to the relay board. Now we're going to move to the CNO1 connector. This connector controls the lock motor, oven lamp, convection fan, door switch, and warming center. Let's look at the lock motor connection, which is the yellow wire. To test it, set the oven to self-clean mode and set your multimeter to volts AC. You'll put one meter lead to the yellow wire and the other meter lead to either the chassis ground or to the white wire on the main control board at the CNO9 connector. There should be 120 volts AC on the meter at this point. The next connection point on this connector will be for the oven lamp. You need to open the oven door or turn the light on at the control panel. Once the light is on, put one meter lead to the wire on the CNO1 black to chassis ground or the white wire on the CNO9 of the main control board. There should be 120 volts AC at this point. Now let's check the convection fan. The tan wire, which is the far right wire, will be the wire you will check for the convection fan. For this test, we'll need to turn the oven to convection bake. Once it's in convection bake, you should get 120 volts AC from the tan wire to chassis ground or the white wire at the CNO9 on the main control board. The blue wire will be for the warming drawer and should have 120 volts AC to the chassis ground or to the white wire at the CNO9 on the main control board when tested. The violet wire on the CNO1 connector will be for the warming center. You will test for 120 volts AC from the wire to chassis ground or to the CNO9 connector at the main control board on the white wire. The warming element doesn't need to be turned on to test it. Next to the CNO1 connector to the right you'll see three individual terminals. The first terminal will be the TO3. This terminal will be for the warming drawer power out. With the warming drawer turned on, there should be 120 volts AC from this wire to terminal chassis ground. The next terminal will be the TO2, which is a convection heater out. This feeds voltage to the convection heater. You can test this terminal for 120 volts from the wire to chassis ground. The TO1 connector is a voltage in connection and is where power comes in to go to the convection heater and the warming drawer relays. There should be 120 volts AC from this connector to chassis ground when tested. The next thing you'll need to test is a broil relay. 
It's a large black relay on the left bottom of the relay control board. This will have a brown and black wire going to it. The brown wire will be L1 out of the relay and the black wire will be the L1 into the relay. You can test from the brown wire to chassis ground for 120 volts. If there's proper power at this point, then test for 120 volts AC at the black wire to chassis ground. The next thing you will test is the bake relay. The bake relay will be the large black relay at the center bottom of the relay control board. This will have a gray and yellow wire going to it. The gray wire will be the L1 into the relay and the yellow wire will be the L1 out of the relay. You can test the gray wire to chassis ground for 120 volts AC. If there is proper power at this point, then you can test for 120 volts AC at the yellow wire to chassis ground. The next thing you'll test is the convection relay. It's a large black relay at the bottom right side of the control board. This will have a red and orange wire going to it. The red wire will be the L1 into the relay, and the orange wire will be the L1 out of the relay. You can test from the red wire to chassis ground for 120 volts AC. If there is proper power at this point, then you can test for 120 volts AC at the orange wire to chassis ground. If any part of the relay control board is faulty, you'll need to replace it. Now let's go ahead and finally unplug that range. To remove it, you'll need to disconnect the wiring and remove the screws holding it in place. Then you can slide the board out. Here's the old board, and here's the new one. If you've already got one, great. If not, you can use your model number to pick one up at AppliancePartsPros.com. Once you have the new board, you can place it on the bracket and install the screws. Then reinstall the wiring to the board. Once you replace the rear cover of the range and install the screws, you're done. Don't forget to plug the range back in or flip the breaker back on. If your relay control board is good, you can check out our other troubleshooting guides to find out what might be causing the problem in your Samsung range. We've got thousands of videos to help you diagnose your appliances and make repairs. If your relay control board is bad, you can order a replacement at AppliancePartsPros.com so you can repair it yourself. Make sure to let us know how the repair went in the comments. If you like this video, let us know by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for your support, and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.